Welcome to Women in Research. My name is Astana Kesa. I'm a communications officer at the Directorate of Corporate Affairs Office, University of Nairobi. And today we have a very special prof that I will allow her to introduce herself but she's a professor in medical anthropology you will correct me prof from here on so anyway i'm excited to have her here and we'll tell you uh, just shortly why she's here today welcome prof all right thank you for inviting me yeah it's a pleasure to be here and mm -hmm. to just share with you about my experiences mm -hmm. uh, in research so my name is salome bukachi i'm a professor of anth uh, medical anthropology in the Department of Anthropology, yeah. Gender and African Studies mm. of the University of Nairobi. Yeah. So we are here today with Professor Bukachi because she was recently uh, appointed, mm -hmm. appointed as a commissioner to a global consortium. Let me call that, then you can correct me, <laughs> to a global body that is going to advise, you know, the world mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. on viral spillovers mm -hmm. she's going to give us more details uh, more details about it but first congratulations prof that is no mean feat and then now you can tell us th about the position right. <laughs> yeah yeah thank you for that and i'm grateful yeah uh, to god for that opportunity mm. to be able to serve in this commission at a higher level yeah so the commission is known as the lancet and uh, coalition for prevention of pandemics at source. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a commission that is going to look at prevention of viral spillover. Mm. When we talk about viral spillover, we are talking about a commission that is going to um, provide information mm -hmm. and advice mm. and uh, mobilize action mm. both at the global level, yeah. both for researchers and implementers to be able to commit towards preventing viral diseases mm. or pandemics mm. before they happen. Yeah. And this comes from just the backdrop of COVID-19. Mm. And we've been looking at this and seeing that the devastation that COVID had on all sectors of development, mm. be it health, mm -hmm. be it education, mm. be it in the policy, political arena, mm. all of our things were Inter interrupted yeah. and it cost quite a lot of money mm -hmm. to be able to bring this pandemic to reduce it and limit its spread by the time it had reduced a lot of havoc had been caused across mm. the, the globe mm. and so this commission on prevention of viral spillover is based on the fact that if we can be able to prevent the spillover that is preventing the viruses from um, coming from where they're sourced yeah. onto human beings, yeah. then that will be able to really um, save the whole world. Yeah. When we look at the COVID-19 um, containment measures, it was really, it took a lot of time for mm. people to be able to pick up the mm. public health measures that were there. Mm. It cost a lot of money, even just to provide the vaccines, come up with the vaccine, mm. um, distribute it. And then we also noted aspects of inequity mm -hmm. in distribution of health mm. resources and health services yeah. across the globe. So some countries were at a higher level than others. Mm. Some countries didn't have vaccines, mm. while well, some were already doing their second uh, dosage. Mm. So there's a lot of inequity when it comes to trying to contain a disease. Mm. If we just start continue doing containment and mm. response, yeah. then there'll be a lot of inequities all over. Mm. But if we do prevention, if we prevent the disease from coming, especially from animals to humans, then it has the disease won't be there, mm -hmm. and therefore everyone is equal because no one will be suffering from yeah, the disease. Yeah. So generally, in a nutshell, Prof, do you have a rough idea of who and who and who is in the commission, mm -hmm. like apart from researchers? Mm -hmm. So um, the commission brings in um, key experts, mm. uh, twenty-eight experts. Okay from all over the, all, all continents are represented mm. and various disciplines are represented, mm -hmm. be they microbiology, mm. be they economists, be they anthropologists. Yeah. It's transdisciplinary bringing yeah. in all different disciplines mm. with the understanding that all these disciplines are important in exactly. the, uh, bringing information that would help prevent the pandemics. Mm. Yeah. All right, now, Prof, uh, just to maybe just highlight on, do you have any idea how you ended up here, how you were appointed here? Have you been working with these people behind the scenes? Maybe we are the ones who need to know in your research endeavors. 
my research um, involves, as I told you, I'm a medical anthropologist. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing research on medical anthropology for several years. All right, Almost I mean. over 15 years. Wow. More than 15 years. Uh -huh. After I finished my master's here in the University of Nairobi, mm. I got a job. My first job was to work at an, a parastatal, mm -hmm. government parastatal, mm. known as, at that time, it was called the Kenya Trypanosomiasis Research Institute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was an institute that was doing research in uh, trying to control the disease trypanosomiasis in animals and uh, sleeping sickness. Mm, in I, I remember sleeping sickness. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this was, uh, this institution brought in everyone, people, there were vets, there were um, medical doctors, there were anthropologists, there were prim primatologists, mm. entomologists. It was just everyone who uh, was necessary to deal with that disease because mm. If we look at it, I would say that it was a disease that was being handled from a One Health perspective. Mm. One Health meaning it's bringing in people that can help deal with aspects of the animal, the environment and the humans together mm -hmm. to try and control the disease. Okay. So that's where I built up my research yeah. skills yeah. in medical anthropology. Mm -hmm. So I worked there for six years. Mm and then transition to the University of Nairobi. Okay. So for the six years I was working there, I uh, got the privilege to be mentored in research at that place. We had, there was very good work mm, ethics. Mm. I owe a lot of my working life mm. to the work ethics mm. I learned from that institution, mm. the director at that time. Mm -hmm. So after that I joined the university to teach uh, in the department. That time was the Institute of Anthropology, yeah. Gender and African Studies. Um, my first unit that I was given to teach was a very interesting topic. Mm. It was called Anthropology of Infectious Diseases. Okay. And because I had grown my love for health issues mm. and medical anthropology mm. at the Parastato, mm. this was a very interesting topic for me. And it came very easy because I was simply just sharing my research experiences mm. with the students. Yeah. And so that helped my teaching to be very alive to the students, combining both the theory and the practical aspects. Mm. So over the years, I've been engaged in various research um, projects, collaborative projects with various partners mm. all over, locally and abroad. Mm. And this has helped sharpen my um, my background in medical anthropology, my skills and my experiences, and also exposure to various ways of just um, handling disease from the social and behavioral perspective. Mm. I want to talk about maybe uh, when you're doing your research, how you, you're meeting and you're collaborating with other, other researchers, mm -hmm. other institutions. Mm -hmm. Yes. The beauty about research is that research brings different people together brings different institutions together and as these institutions and people interact you get to learn more about various aspects mm, yeah. both within sure. my own discipline mm. as a medical anthropologist mm. but also in other disciplines like veterinary mm. sciences mm. so there are things i can talk about within the veterinary field yeah. not because i'm a veterinary expert mm. but because of having collaborated and mm, worked okay. with the veterinary professionals mm. or even the medical health perspective so that has helped to um, have kind of a holistic picture mm. of the various disciplines yeah. but still knowing how to bring in my discipline mm. to be able to provide uh, the context that is required to improve on management of diseases mm. yeah both in humans and animals. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as a commission, mm -hmm. do you have a rough idea of the roadmap? Uh, how long is this appointment for? And uh, the idea, how you're going to implement the, mm -hmm. the functions mm -hmm. which you have been given? Mm -hmm. So as I indicated that this is a commission of 28 mm -hmm. experts mm -hmm. with various disciplines from yeah. various aspects. Mm -hmm. And so um, some of the key objectives or the key tasks that the commission is out to address. As I told you, it's about um, kind of providing the advocacy and advisory for implementers and uh, researchers to work together in a transdisciplinary way mm, mm. to be able to prevent pandemics yeah. at source. Mm. And uh, how to support this is by uh, providing information, providing mm. evidence mm -hmm. on the drivers of spillover 
viral spillovers mm -hmm. to provide um, assessments on the various strategies and interventions that would be useful towards preventing these viral spillovers. Mm. Um, providing information through evidence, research mm -hmm. and evidence, mm -hmm. scientific <coughs> research and evidence mm -hmm. on uh, the, the various contexts of the viral spillovers, the social, the political, the mm. economic mm. contexts mm. that are important to take into consideration even when implementing interventions for prevention. But also to look at the trade-offs. Even as we say we want to prevent uh, viral spillovers, what are the cost benefit mm. of prevention? Mm. What are the trade-offs that we'll have to undertake to prevent? Because sometimes, many times, if you look at our interventions, they've been response. Mm. It's almost like we are firefighting mm. when the fire is already in the house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But how? what can we do to be able to prevent the fire from starting? So that's what we are about, mm. to bring evidence that can help prevent the fire before it starts. Yeah to bring evidence that can help us put in place interventions that would help prevent these pandemics. Mm. If we look at most of the pandemics that we have had or the epidemics that have affected the globe, a lot of them have involved animals, mm. diseases mm. that are transmittable from animals to humans, what we call the zoonotic diseases. Mm. Mm. Um, and so uh, prevention, we, we do prevention at different levels. Mm -hmm. There's the primary prevention, and that primary prevention is trying to understand what causes these viruses and these pathogens to move from their original source sure. to human beings. Okay. That's what is then mm -hmm. the spillover, mm -hmm. and that's the primary one. Mm. The secondary is once it's in human beings, it's spreading from me to you to someone mm. else. How do we contain it? Mm -hmm. This commission is about trying to understand what are the things at this higher level, the mm. primary level prevention, so that um, we can understand how do diseases move from, how do pathogens move from animals to humans, what are the drivers. So if we know those drivers, what are causing these spillovers, mm. then we can advise that we need to put in place this kind of measures mm. that could help prevent. And the prevention could be for any of these diseases that already exist yeah, or for or any other new disease that may emerge mm. and infect human beings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coming from a commission's mm -hmm. point of view, mm -hmm. it sounds like a continuous cycle because, I mean, these are things that are happening and they are, they are changing mm -hmm. every other day. We are growing, we are moving, we are becoming, you know, mm -hmm. something else. So also, the study of humans and their behavior and how they, wow, you you guys do a lot of work <laughs> so anyway from mm -hmm. I, I have two questions that are battling mm -hmm. from a layman's point of view like what do i need to know and is there any way i can help mm -hmm. I, as i'm living my day-to-day -day life out there mm -hmm. is there any way i can do to uh to to assist to contribute to the prevention of these things mm -hmm. first answer that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so i think um and the importance of anthropology mm. and when we look at medical anthropology generally anthropology is about studying human beings mm. understanding their culture who they are from the past the present and the future and across different geographical spaces so anthropology brings in the study of human beings from a holistic perspective mm. and to answer your question about what can you as a layman mm. contribute anthropology brings in the aspect of understanding what are the lay perspectives what are people thinking about a disease mm. if you look at covid what were people's thoughts about covid where did it come from what were the attitudes they had mm -hmm. what are their practices mm -hmm. some practices could be their indigenous knowledge mm -hmm. which also has its place so as anthropologists we are bringing in these uh, lay perspectives mm. into the uh, the, 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 the scientific study mm -hmm. to see what are the best practices we can learn from some of the indigenous knowledge that exists. Mm. What are the social contexts in which people are battling with these, the aspects of pandemics or mm. epidemics? Mm. Um, what, are their, what space are they in? What is their social context like? Mm. Because you find that sometimes a solution we provide to one context will not necessarily be 
suitable for another mm, context mm. because of the different social, yeah. political, mm. economic, mm. historical yeah. backgrounds yeah. that different communities or different regions would have. Mm. So anthropology comes in to pull these aspects, to understand them, and to provide them, contribute with them into the scientific mm. evidence yeah. that is being uh, provided. Mm. Not to say that the indigenous knowledge is not scientific. It's mm -mm. part of the scientific information mm. that we weave in into uh, the commission's work. It's actually understand. very interesting. As you're saying it, I'm visualizing it, and it sounds very broad and very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, um, and to ask, just from a point of uh, maybe encouraging mm -hmm. another young researcher somewhere mm -hmm. who, who is feeling like they're just... Uh, maybe drowning in their research or covered in their research. Uh, what, what encouragement would you give them? Mm -hmm. Maybe to, um, I will go back to my dream mm -hmm. when I started off as a young girl, mm -hmm. just um, building up my career. So my dream was initially to be a medical doctor wow. when I was young and growing up. I mm. liked attending to people when mm. anyone had a wound or mm. was sick, I mm. was the caregiver. Mm. And I loved biology, I loved how the body works and just, it, it was very intriguing for me. Mm. And so in school that's what I wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. But as we all know, sometimes uh, our subjects, we do not we do not get the right combination mm, after exams. Yeah. So after my exams, mm -hmm. I did very well in biology, mm -hmm. but my chemistry and my maths were, were not, not, were not yeah. to the level which was required for me to do a course in medicine. Mm -hmm. And so I, I shifted to the arts subjects. Okay. Forgot about my medicine, mm -hmm. shifted to my arts subjects. Mm -hmm. So now while I'm doing the arts, I loved English and literature. So at some point I was now saying, I want to be a journalist. And that's what I wanted to do when I came to campus now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but when we chose our, our courses for the university, mm -hmm. I, I didn't see journalism at that time. Mm -hmm. So I picked something on information science, which I thought, okay, okay. this is the closest. closest. Sounds like, <laughs> I totally get <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you see when we are choosing the subjects, you have to fill in four spaces. And so I asked uh, my teacher who used to be also my mentor in mm -hmm. high school, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Oji, mm. I asked him, so what, what course should I choose besides this information science? And he said, maybe you can take anthropology. So I asked, what is anthropology? And I was told, it's something like history. Oh. So I said, okay, let me just fill up the space. Mm. But when our selections came, I was That's chosen what to, do you were to do goodness. So I came and settled mm -hmm. because at that time we didn't have, there was not much of shifting to different subjects. You come in, you settle, you move on, <laughs> you learn and move on. Mm. So I settled in to learn what this anthropology was all about. Mm. I know my parents would ask me, what is this anthropology? Because at that time they knew education, mm. they knew law. Uh, medicine. There were three or four that were known. Engineering, uh -huh. medicine, yes. law, uh -huh. and now the teacher. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so they were like, oh. there, there was no teaching because for them it's like, maybe teaching would have been better than this anthropology. But I told them, this is what we have been called to do. So I did it. So mm. For my first two years, it was just about applying yourself to learn what it is. Mm. Now in my third year, we were taught medical anthropology and I fell in love with it. Wow. So that just opened my eyes and mm. from then on, mm. that was my drive and my focus from now my undergraduate mm. all the way to my master's mm. and my PhD. Mm. For me, it became then the link to what I wanted to be when I was young. Okay. A doctor. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm Closest. doing something in the health field, mm. not a direct doctor, but in a different way, yeah. still interacting in that health space. Mm. And so for, um, and, and for me that has uh, built me up mm. um, and brought me to where I am today. Mm. So for somebody, a researcher who is out there mm. and is trying to do different things and wondering whether their research is making sense, mm. wondering whether they'll make it, I would just like to say that the path towards your dream may not be a straight line. Mm. Sometimes it goes sideways, mm. sideways, but as you keep at it, the diligence and the focus, you will find yourself reaching where your heart's desire resonates mm. with your heart's desire. Yeah. So for me, that has been quite key. The other thing that has been key is about 
I like quoting from the Bible. Yeah. So uh, in Proverbs, mm. there's a, a verse that says, do you see a man diligent in what he does? Mm -hmm. He shall not stand before mere men, mm. but he shall stand before kings. Mm. So it's about your diligence. How are you applying yourself to what you have to do, irrespective of no matter how small it looks? Mm -hmm. Apply yourself, give your diligence, you will find yourself moving and shifting to places. Mm. I've seen that for me, it's open for me doors, just being diligent mm. and applying that in my life. Mm. The other thing is about not despising days of small beginnings. Mm. When I, w I got my first job, it was a government job and that time people were like, government jobs are not good. And uh, the pay was not as much as other places. Mm -hmm. But the opportunities I got there were mm. awesome. Yeah. And I just went there and said, I am not despising things of small beginnings. Yeah. I will do my best where I am. And as I did my best, trusted God, mm. he opened up opportunities for me. Mm. So when you find yourself, you're doing research and you think it's just in your small world here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you think you're just in your small world, but you don't know the impact you're creating. So just keep at it, don't mm. give up. Mm. Sometimes it's tough because you have to juggle mm. several things. Mm. Um, uh, sometimes even the funding, maybe sometimes y you don't have the funding mm. and you need to do the research. Mm. Just keep at it. It's interesting that we are doing this during the research week. Mm -hmm. We were talking before the camera started rolling and we were saying mm -hmm. that the person who delivered the keynote presentation was challenging African researchers mm -hmm. in terms of their effectiveness of the evidence or the, um, the data that they get after doing research. Mm -hmm. So maybe now a question to you as a researcher, mm -hmm. how do you ensure that your research findings or your evidence get to change a life in the community or impact either the people around you immediately or going forward what are you going to do so that you make sure that happens mm -hmm. um when i was new in research mm -hmm. i used to compare myself with other researchers from other disciplines and i would say anthropology our work seems more theoretical mm. i'm not seeing the impact the mm. way i would see it when a doctor when somebody's sick the doctor comes yeah. injects you gives yeah. you some intervention and you're okay and at some point i thought really does my anthropology have any practical aspects mm -hmm. but with time as i grew in anthropology i learned that there was a lot yeah. about the practicality of anthropology mm. so our work helps to um, provide the context that is important for interventions to take place. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Prof. Mm -hmm. Now, since our time is almost running out, can you please give us a parting shot, maybe from the perspective of uh, the researcher you, the University of Nairobi uh, <laughs> staff that you are, and from the anthropologist that you are? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll start with the, the reason why we were here was mm, about yes. the commission. Yes. So one of the things I would like to say is that as the old adage goes, prevention is better than cure. Mm -hmm. If we are able to implement prevention strategies, it will help bring about equity in mm. everyone because there's no disease we'll be fighting. Yeah, but when sure. a disease comes, mm. then we're at different levels. You may totally. have the resources I don't have, and so our containment will not be equitably uh, distributed. Mm. But if we prevent the disease from coming, then no one is sick. And mm -hmm. So that puts us at the same score. Mm -hmm. So it's just to f uh, stress about working on prevention mm. so that we can work towards prevention of diseases rather than waiting for it to come and then we start responding yeah so i'm happy with the the the, the topic of the commission mm. and uh, we are hopeful that we will be able to provide solutions that will be useful mm. towards prevention all right yeah thank you prof yeah i'm also glad to represent anthropology at yeah. this global level mm -hmm. um as i told as i told you before my parents would ask me what is anthropology yeah, sure. and that's a question i've had also over again with yeah. parents of my students yeah. calling me and asking me will my child get a job what is this anthropology yeah. so uh, just to uh, reiterate that anthropology is a very important subject that looks at human beings from a holistic perspective and in order for 
um, interventions development to happen, it's important that that context is provided mm. Mm. so that solutions are applicable and appropriate to the communities that are being um, uh, where those interventions are being implemented. Mm. And lastly, mm -hmm. just to encourage researchers mm -hmm. and the young upcoming mm -hmm. uh, students, mm -hmm. um, just to focus that um, diligence, as I said before, yes, yes. your diligence mm -hmm. will open a door for you before Kings. Mm. Uh, your focus will help steer you ahead. Mm -hmm. The path to where you want to be is never a straight path. It's mm -hmm. not always a straight path. Mm -hmm. So just keep going at it and don't lose heart. Mm -hmm. Even when you find yourself in a space where you don't know what, what is this mm -hmm. subject I'm doing. Yeah. Don't lose heart. Mm -hmm. Just focus on it. What you do you'll find its use somewhere and it will be able to help you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Prof. Maybe as a last last question, in terms of overall achievements in your own life, where do you place this? On a scale of one to five. <laughs> five being the highest, one being... <laughs> this, okay. Let me, allow me to just talk about uh, where I have been before this commission. Mm -hmm. Before this commission, yeah. I was one of the One Health High Level Expert Panel All right. members mm -hmm. uh, who are also drawn from many different countries mm -hmm. and a team of experts who were brought together. Mm -hmm. uh, we applied yeah. and out of very many uh, applications, uh, we were successful. I was one of them. Okay. And uh, it, it's about still dealing with the pandemics, yeah. still dealing with uh, diseases, mm. but looking at it from this one health approach where we are looking at it from looking at the health of our environment, mm. the health of our animals, mm. and the health of the human beings, mm. handling that from a coordinated and a transdisciplinary way yeah. to help tackle the emerging or re-emerging diseases. Mm. So I was one of the members before yeah. I got into the commission. Oh, nice. And so for me, this um, I owe a lot of it to God, mm -hmm. yeah, because he has seen me through from where I started, where mm -hmm. I didn't imagine I would be sitting in such a global uh, level, mm. panel, mm. but there I am, and I know that I'm there to provide solutions mm. that can help um, avert the health, the negative health implications mm. in this place. Thank so, you, Prof. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming here, thank the you. women in research. Uh, I know I have learned about anthropology and from today onwards I am a converted. <laughs> I'm converted. I, I, I've heard the importance of anthropology and the role it plays in our well-being, in our health, overall health as human beings and as a, the one health cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Our environment, animals, mm -hmm. human beings. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one.